Hi, I am Dr. Julie Brown. I am your care trained concussion doctor and board certified chiropractic neurologist. I'm also currently seeing the light at the end of the tunnel for my master's program. And I wanted to share a paper that, one of a million papers, not quite a million, but a lot of papers that I have read. And this one in particular was done by my mentor and the other authors on there I also look up to as they have more knowledge than I do. And the name of the paper is called Head Position and Posturography, a Novel Biomarker to Identify Concussion Sufferers. And this was a 2020 paper that was published in Brain Sciences, and I will link it below if you'd like to go read about it. Now, I am going to be biased. This is what I do in my office, and I like to see the statistical analysis and validation of what we do, and it was taught to me by the author, which is amazing. So, you know, there could be a bias, it's possible. Now. Two of the authors, full disclosures, create the balance plate, but they were not involved in the testing of these patients. These patients were tested in tertiary clinics like myself, and there were 575 post-concussed patients, meaning they'd had a concussion within the past six months and still had symptoms, and they were compared to 60 healthy controls. And this was a retrospective study, so they went back and looked at these patients. Now, the Argument is that when you do a balance test and your head is neutral and your eyes closed, eyes open with no foam, then you put someone on foam, you do the same thing. There's not really a big enough difference to identify these post-concussive syndrome patients. We need to do more. So this paper actually had, did those four tests, plus they did four more. And head turned to the right, eyes closed, to the left, eyes closed, head flexed, eyes closed, and head extended, eyes closed. And they compared the difference in stability scores to each of those positions to neutral in the concussed group and in the healthy group. And what they found is the right and left definitely showed statistical significance in the concussed group, and then again when compared to the healthy group. There was a statistical significance with head flexion, meaning patients got better with head flexion in a concussed group and didn't really change in the normal group. And then with head extension, both groups did bad. So the concussed group, that was the worst one that they had, which is typically what I see. And also the normal healthy group had an issue with looking up and closing their eyes and balancing. So that one wasn't as great. It didn't stand out as a significant biomarker for post-concussive syndrome. So great way to test patients. Now, this paper only looked at stability scores. It doesn't look at sway patterns. It doesn't look at center of pressure, which are other things that we look at to see what's going on with the brain. The reality is anybody who is treating concussion needs to understand these details. Thankfully, I feel like I do and I question it every day to make sure that I do. So if your therapist is not doing that, which many of the patients that I see have been to a lot of people, it's not happening. You got to get them to do it and they need to understand it. That's it. Thanks.